Hello guys and welcome to our first Train Sim World 3 video. Today we are on the Schnellfahrstrecke Kassel Würzburg which is the new German route and we're going to be driving this Ice 3 but it's not just any Ice 3 it's an Ice 3 coupled up to another one so make it a double Ice 3. So yeah you've got the Ice 1 over here which will be making its way down south um, to Würzburg and we are going to be making our way up north to Kassel. So let's hop in the cab and set everything up. Um, I believe I've done the reverser, you just set that to forward. Um, unlock the doors, so that's usually like that. Um, let's set the AFB. So if we remember from the Karl Narken route in Train Symbol 2, this was done by turning that on, pressing 6 and then pressing 5. Uh, here we are. We can now set the AFB to 100. I'm not going to set any PZB on just yet, or LZB. Um, I'm a bit rough with the safety system so far. To turn the passenger lights on, I think it's 5, then 5 again, then exit. But yeah, doesn't this thing just look gorgeous? And this is the back of the train, very, very long train. 16 cars, I think. Let's have a look. Yeah, 16 cars. So what we're going to do is we're going to see this depart. Identical carriages almost. There we are, this is where it couples up. Over here. Very nice. We're going to see this depart, so let's uh, put our free camera to the front of the train. Like so. Let's shut the doors. Yep. Release the brakes, and off we go. Lovely. As it makes its way around the bend. Let's get back in the cab. So I bought the German route of Train Simul 3, which gave me this route. Um, and it also gave me Southeastern High Speed, which I got a free upgrade from because I owned Train Simul 2 with Southeastern. Um, so that was uh, brilliant. As you can see, it's not lagging that much so far. Um, probably as I'm on the scenario planner and I didn't put as many AI services. Um, we've, we're also on dynamic weather, so the weather could change at any time of the day. Let's get the uh, cruise control up to 220. Top speed today should be 250 kilometers per hour or 155.6 miles per hour. I remember that because of the Colin Arkin route. And our destination is just over 50 miles away. And blimey, this route is full of tunnels.
and it's full of uh, steep uphill and downhill gradients as well. Let's increase that to 250 kilometers per hour. It should take us around half an hour to get there. And this is not the full length of the route. So we started um, down here. We're going northwards, so northbound. This is Fielder. Um, and we're gonna make the 50 mile or so long journey to Kazel, which is up there. And actually this route continues down south all the way to Würzburg, which is down here. So the full length route between Würzburg and Kassel is around 115 miles, which is the longest ever route to come to the Trentsim World franchise. Which in my opinion is great. Not only that, it's also high speed. Pretty much as soon as you leave the station, you're already going at high speed. This reminds me of the LGV route as well, where you leave Avignon and you're immediately going 300 or so kilometers per hour. Albeit, this is not as fast as the LGV route. To be fair, I could do this huddless now because I don't have the PZB or LZB on, or the ZIFA. As you can see, the new lighting effects um, of Trains in World 3, which is different to the previous game of Trains in World 2. Which brings a more realistic touch to it. And this is the beautiful viaduct. One of many, to be fair. Nice. Without a doubt, if you're an old gen like I am, I'm on PlayStation 4, you'll receive some lag, some low frame rate. Um, I haven't got a frame rate checker installed on my PS4. Well, it doesn't come with one, but yeah. Frame rate isn't as great, but you know, what can you expect? It's old gen, nine year old technology. It's not going to cope with high performance, high demand in games like, like this one. For some reason the speed limit decreases to 200. So therefore it's time to break. We are 200 kilometers per hour. I think it's because we're cr cr passing a section of junctions, I think. Probably, I don't know. Okay, so it's going to go back up again. 
To be fair, I'm really enjoying this route since I got trained in World 3 last week. Both this one and South Eastern um, High Speed London to Fatfisham and Ashford have been pretty good. Let's get back to business. Oh, nope, let's not get back to business. Time to break again. Yeah, I'm not used to the timing of the uh, the speed limits, basically where they are um, along the route, so I need to get um, used to that and apply the brakes where necessary. But the scenery is top notch, isn't it? So it's already been 25 or so kilometers since we left Fjolda. And 60 kilometers, just under 60 kilometers till we reach Kazel Wilhelm Zohar. I think that's how you say it. All right, let's get back up again. On record, the Ice 3 has reached 380 kilometers per hour. Uh, and in normal German high speed, it's limited to 250 or 280. Maybe 300 as well. So you might be wondering, what else is there that features in Train Simul 3 as a whole? Well, the answer to that is it depends what edition you've bought. So if you've bought um, so the country starter packs, so the US, uh, German and British starter packs, including the Liverpool Lime Street Steam starter pack, which was at £30 each, then you'll get the route itself plus all the preserved collection routes you've owned from Train Simul 2. Um, and any free upgrades, so for example South Eastern High Speed and Liverpool Lime Street. But if you got, say the Deluxe Edition, which was £50 I believe, um, you can get the US Freight Route, the German Route, which is this one, South Eastern High Speed, which is the British Route, you get the Training Centre, and you get Liverpool Lime Street uh, to crew, the Spirit of Steam Route. Um, so yeah, and if you've got the standard edition, which is £40, you get the British, German and freight, uh, US freight routes and the training centre. So yeah, and plus of course your preserved collection from previous trains and world editions from previous years. Um, there are also some upgrades, so you've got the lighting effects, you've got new weather, so dynamic weather, lightning, thunderstorm, um, sparks on the pantograph, um, occasionally, I mean, it's, you're not going to see it often, but there are definitely some sparks on that pantograph, or the contact third rail shoe if you're playing on 465 for example, I'm going to leave it here, so you might see it. Uh, if you don't, that's fine. Okay, looks like we're not going to see the spark.
and some new trains of course. So remember, if you're liking what you're seeing and you want to see more of this kind of content, make sure to like and subscribe and leave a comment down below on any of your opinions and thoughts. Greatly appreciate it. Thanks, guys. Also, if you missed my Train Sim World 3 live stream that I did on Friday the 16th of September, then have a look in the description. The link to that live stream will be there for you to watch it if you haven't already done so. So I did the Southeastern, um, I did a Train Sim World 2 preserved collection route and I had a look at some Bankers International as well. And I did a Dartford service. which I may showcase as a video sometime soon. So we're about 25 miles um, left to Carsall, so we're about halfway there now. Uh, we started the service at 7, it's now 7.17, so we've driven for 17, well 15 minutes, we spent 2 minutes um, not driving at the beginning. So yeah, it's basically high speed uh, the entire way. I mean, this is different to the Carl Narkin route, which you got for Train Sim World 2, because that's only high speed between Duran and Köln, and the rest is just 160 kilometers per hour. Um, but this is 155 miles an hour, the entire route, the entire 115 miles. So yeah, you'll be doing 115 miles in about an hour and five, an hour and ten. Um, if you have your average speed like that, but of course that depends if you're making a stop at Fielder or if you're going non-stop. On this route you can drive the DBBR 185, you can drive the DBBR 401 which is the ICE 1 and this train which is the DBBR 403 ICE 3. I believe it's just a normal ICE 3 because the ICE 3M, which you find on the Colnarkin route, is the DBBR 406. We've also got some inside passenger information systems upgraded onto these in-city coaches. I'm going to move forward to the front of the train from the back camera. You'll see why in a minute. Actually, I'm going to halt that because there's a speed limit coming up. put some brakes here because we are going downhill at the same time whilst covering a lot of dif a lot of distance So now we're going 200 kilometers an hour, that's the typical British high speed intercity speed that um, class 91s and Pendolinos 90s go at. Fastest British domestic high speed is of course HS1. And we'll soon be HS2 in about five years time. Right, 
Let's go back to 250. Oh, there's a nice one. That one's going to Würzburg, I believe. I set it to go to Würzburg. Because this route is limited to 250 kilometers an hour, the fastest route in the, in the entire game, out of every single route released, remains still the LGV Mediterranean, where you can do 200 miles per hour, or 320 kilometers per hour. Alright, let's do what I was going to do earlier. The frame rate will decrease if you enter and exit a tunnel. Right, so I've reached the front. Okay, now once we've exited this tunnel, um, so after this second tunnel, we're going to do a flyby shot because obviously there is no high speed without flyby shots. Especially that we're 12 and a half miles away from Kazel. Hopefully, there's an interesting viaduct along the way. Okay, right. Perfect. Should we do another one? Let's do another one. All right. Excellent. Okay, we'll do one more. Just one more. Because I am absolutely loving this high speed. Excellent. I'd love to train spot there one day. See some high speed. I'm going to send that camera back to the uh, rear of the train. Oh, I've just earned a trophy. They're very dark, these tunnels, aren't they? Train really does look excellent, doesn't it? I'm quite liking the cab as well. Very big window. Front window is very big. 
There's about five miles to go, or eight kilometers to go, as that's probably more measurable. Uh, I'm probably going to start braking. Oh, okay, right, okay, looks like I need to start braking now. See, this is where LZB comes into use because it acts like the TVM, tells you the speed limits and it knows, it automatically brakes for the upcoming speed limit reduction. So it's a bit like the TVM, a little bit, but the LZB is better, a little bit better than the TVM. Because you don't actually have to do anything. There we are, 180. That's about 110 miles per hour, just over. Okay, right, 140. Okay. Actually, I'm gonna see what happens. Okay, right, okay. So the train does brake automatically if you reduce the cruise control AFB uh, speed limit. Not far from Castle Wilhelm Wilhelmshohe. This train goes over a junction, it makes such a great sound. Right, I believe it's going to go down to 100 kilometers an hour, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, it will. You've also got some G-force effects for acceleration and braking in this game, so that's um, a nice touch as well. Although that was adopted from Train to World 2. Wow, it's a massive snake, isn't it? As it goes around the bend. Okay, just letting gravity decrease the train speed, which is pretty cool. We're just a mile out of Kazel now. So we've already reached the north end of this route. Let's see if I can go in at around 45 miles per hour. I like going into stations at fast speed when I have a very long train. Because how long's our train? Look at the bottom right. 400.1 meters. So, yeah, I like to go quite fast. So we're going about 43 miles per hour entering the station. I like this station as well. I'm gonna see why. There we are. Right, let's stop breaking. It's got a very nice tunnel. You could hear the squeaking of the brakes, or perhaps not. you're not going to hear the squeaking of the brakes. Might have removed that actually. Right, okay. Okay. Right. Let's unlock some doors. Did the back of the train make it? Yeah, it did. Comfortably. I always like to check. Hate it when I have to use selective door operation. 
So yeah, if you use scenario planner, you're not going to get much frame rate issues. Not going to get, uh, but if you use timetable mode, then you probably will, just because of how many AI services there are in this route. You've got working PIS there, but it's not working as we're on the scenario planner. But yeah, this station's really lovely. It's very nice. Not many stations are like that in England. So you've got the back, which is fully outside, and the front, which is like under a roof. Okay, that's our service completed. Let's, um, I'm gonna take one final screenshot because uh, the IS-3 is wonderful. Look at that shadow as well. Yeah, okay, that'll do. Let's shut the doors. Doors closed, service completed. Let's see how we did. So that was 30 minutes to travel 90 kilometers. So that was around 55 miles, I think. Probably a bit more, but yeah. And yeah, so very nice run with our double ice, our 16 car train. Um, so thanks everybody for coming along and watching our first Trains in Mold 3 proper video for the channel. If, if you did like it, please do make sure to like and subscribe um, and check out my other um, Trains in Mold 2 um, videos if you want to. Um, we're going to be doing some more Trains in Mold 3 videos in the future, so make sure to turn on all of your notifications and have your notifications enabled for YouTube. Um, and make sure to join the Discord server and to check out the PayPal link. Both of those links are in the description. So thanks all for coming along, uh, coming along and watching and see you in the next video. See you guys. Take care. Bye bye.